So if you've been taking photos like this one, but you want to learn to take photos like this one, you're in the right place because I'm gonna teach you that today. Photos of the night sky with like the Milky Way visible or northern lights or waterfalls with this silky smooth water look incredibly good in my opinion. And all of those are achieved with a long exposure, which is actually quite an easy technique to use. So every time you take a photo, your shutter will open and close, revealing the sensor inside the camera and exposing the image. Now, how much it takes for the shutter to open and close is called the shutter speed or exposure time. And if the shutter stays open for a long time, that is called a long exposure. So during a long exposure, everything that moves within the frame will get blurred out because your shutter speed is not freezing the motion, but it's capturing the motion for a long time. So when you're taking a long exposure shot of water, it will get this blurred, really beautiful looking surface. Long exposure can also be used in dark scenarios. For example, when you're photographing the night sky, because the longer your shutter stays open, the more light it'll let in the sensor resulting in a brighter image and if you don't know how manual exposure works in photos you can check out my video on that there's a link in the description but basically long exposure will blur out any movement and it will result in a bright image so if it's not really dark outside you're gonna have to have a low ISO and a small aperture so the image won't be blown out and because long exposures will blur out the movement it will also blur out the shake from your hands so what you need for a long exposure shot is a tripod. So you can try to take a long exposure shot even without a tripod, but it won't be sharp and it will just look bad. So you need a tripod for long exposures. And the tripod that I have is a KNF Concept TM2515T1. And KNF Concept was kind enough to send me this tripod for this video, but I'm not getting paid by them to say anything about it. So I just want to point out a few things that you should look for in a tripod while you're buying one. And I also want to point out why I wanted to have this exact tripod and there's also a link to this tripod in the description down below so you don't want to have a tripod that is too lightweight because that will just fall over and it won't keep your camera steady this one is fairly lightweight which is good for traveling or backpacking out in the woods but it's still sturdy enough to hold my camera in place so you shouldn't get the most lightweight tripod out there but you don't need the most heavy duty tripod out there either just get one that is sturdy enough to hold your camera in place so the next thing with tripods is the maximum height this actually goes really really high it's even taller than than I am even though I'm not the tallest guy around but you know this is tall and I don't think you need one that goes up to like two meters two and a half meters but the higher it will go the more versatile it will be but also if you push your tripod too high it will be less steady so I don't basically ever push my tripod to the maximum height anyways and also the lowest possible point varies from tripod to tripod so if you want to do a lot of flow to the ground stuff you should look for a tripod where you can twist this center column upside down so you can hook your tripod like on the bottom of the tripod so for example with this one I can take out the center column and I can just push it back in upside down and then I can have the camera hanging from here so I can get really really low to the ground if I need to. And also with the center column, if I unscrew one of these legs, I can also turn this tripod into a monopod which is really handy for us filmmakers. So if I need a monopod, now I have one from this tripod. But my favorite feature with this tripod is that you can actually pull out the center column and make it vertical like this so you can get those nice top down shots. And this is something that I've never had before and I absolutely love this feature with this tripod. So those are the types of features that you should look for when you're buying a tripod. And you shouldn't ever get the cheapest one out there because these will last you ages if you buy a good one. I've had my previous tripod for, I don't know, I think 10 years or something. So if you buy a tripod for like 100 bucks, 200 bucks, you should be good for several years. So don't save money on these ones. So basically all you need for a long exposure shot is a sturdy tripod that'll hold your camera in place. And all you have to do is set down your camera on the tripod, frame your shot and then use a long shutter speed for that long exposure shot. And once you have a tripod you can just experiment with long exposure in all kinds of scenarios where there's movement in the frame. For example cars driving by or people running or anything like that and you can just experiment to see how long exposure affects the photos that you take. Now it's the time for me to go pick up my friend and drive to the waterfall that we're going to shoot today and I'll show you guys how long exposure affects the photos that you take. So we just got to our location and this looks like a fantastic place for a long exposure shot. So now I'm gonna go set up the tripod right there and then go stand on that ledge and take a photo of the waterfall with me standing in the shot. 
Okay, great. So actually I took three shots. One is at one five hundredth of a second, one is at one fiftieth of a second, and the last one is at two second shutter speed. So in this first shot with the one five hundredth of a second shutter speed, you can see that the shutter speed freezes the whole motion of the waterfall. And I think the water looks really boring in this one. Now when we go to one fiftieth of a second, you can start to see that blurred out water, but this is not yet quite what we want. So we want to have that silky smooth waterfall. So when we crank up our shutter speed to two seconds, we which is a really long shutter speed and you really need that tripod for it you're going to get that buttery silky smooth water and this also works with like ocean waves or anything else than waterfalls as well so it doesn't have to be a place like this one it can be just the sea but you might need to have an even longer shutter speed to get that silky smooth water but that is how you level up your landscape shots with water with a long exposure so just remember to get a tripod that holds your camera in place and if there's any movement in the shot it will get blurred out thank you for watching and i hope i will see you in the next one